In today's tutorial, I'm going to be talking about two different techniques for color correction and color grading within Premiere Pro. I'm going to be looking at the Lumetri color panel, which is an inbuilt tool within Premiere Pro. And then I'm also going to be looking at the plugin Film Convert. Now, both tools have a lot of functionality in common. They both allow you to make basic corrections to your footage, change your exposure, change your contrast, change color temperature, but they also have their own individual uses. And so, for example, the Lumetri color panel now has secondary color correction. So I thought it'd be useful to go over a few of the idiosyncrasies and the unique features of each individual tool within Premiere Pro. So if we start off with the Lumetri color panel, one of the major updates it's had recently is the addition of secondary color correction. Now both Lumetri and Film Convert, like I said, allow you to do basic correction. So you can go in and very quickly start to change the color temperature of your footage. So if you want to add some warmth, you can do that very easily. If you want to change the exposure, etc., you have all your sliders so you can play with them to your heart's content. And I think we almost take for granted now, or I certainly do, how easy this is. In Premiere Pro, certainly before the introduction of the Lumetri color panel, it was very much a two-stage process using RGB curves and three-way color corrector. So to have this all in one panel with a bunch of sliders is, is really a godsend. There's also the creative option, so you can emulate certain film stocks. And that's something that Film Convert used to be really good for, and still is very good for, but it's something the Lumetri color panel is catching up with. And what I really like with the looks is that you have a nice slider here where you can dial down the intensity to your own particular taste and you've got so much sort of granular control over the actual look that you're trying to define. Now the major update to the Lumetri color panel in CC 2015.3, which is the latest release came out in, I believe, of July 2016, was the addition of the HSL secondary color correction. Now, HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. So what you can do is select certain parts of your image based on those three variables, the hue, the saturation, and the luminance. So it's very good for isolating particular colors, for example. And then once you've selected those colors, you can work on those, change those, increase the saturation, change the hue, etc. So in this scene here, we've got this beautiful wooded scene with a carpet of bluebells and despite the name bluebells they're actually more of a sort of purpley color and with the secondary color correction what I can do is based on some values and you'll see here I have the three sliders for hue saturation and luminance which I've dialed in already and if I select this tick box here what it's going to do is show you a mask and you'll see here that the white areas within the image now that I've applied the mask are the areas that are selected and the bluebells now I can have a play around with. And for example, I could change the temperature of them. So if I just untick this for a second, if I wanted to make them kind of bluer, and if I really wanted to bump up the saturation of them, I could do that. And that's more or less only affecting the bluebells. Now you'll see when I selected the mask, there's a few areas up here in the image, and that's because there's potentially some chromatic aberration in the sort of purple area uh, within this image. And so what I could do is I could put a, a, just a rough mask across the top area of the image to exclude that. But you'll just see there, if I toggle that on and off, it's pretty much only affecting the bluebells there. And please don't take the, the, the grade of this image uh, too seriously. This is purely for demonstration purposes. So the fact that it's looking rather garish, uh, don't worry too much about that. Now, one of the other great things about the Lumetri color panel is that it's an accelerated effect, meaning that if you have a reasonably decent GPU in your system, Premiere Pro can take advantage of it and push a lot of rendering off onto that and give you real time or almost real time playback with the effect applied. So if I go through and play here, it's dropping a few frames, but it's playing reasonably smoothly. And what you'll notice is if I actually apply a color correction as the video is playing, I can see that take effect pretty much in real time. So I can play with my sliders and actually get my image to suit whilst I watch it play back. And that's a really useful thing to do. It just means that the computer is not really stuttering or slowing down to a complete halt. And I can get a really good idea of what my image is going to look like when it's moving, which is really important because your image, that's how it's going to be displayed. So to see how your color grade is going to look, whilst you're doing it, whilst the image is moving, is a really powerful tool. We're now gonna have a look at the Film Convert plugin and exactly how this works within Premiere Pro. 
And it's reasonably simple and straightforward. It's not quite the same as the Lumetri color panel. You don't get your own panel. It just appears in the effects control. But you have a similar amount of settings. They're not set out in exactly the same way, but if you're new to Film Convert or haven't used it before, watch the video that I made explaining how I use that plugin. Now, one of the things that Film Convert really shines at is being able to emulate real film stocks based on real cameras. And the name's almost in the title there, Film Convert, and it's designed to convert your digital footage to have very much a authentic film-like feel and look to it. And not only is it just doing this with a generic, we'll just put a film stock over the top of it, it's able to do this based on the make and model of the camera that it was shot on. And this is really cool if you're trying to get a very authentic and organic feel or as much as you can from a digital source. It has everything from expensive cameras like the Arri Alexa down to sort of more indie friendly cameras like Blackmagic and everything pretty much in between. So there's some budget Canon DSLRs like the 550D or the T2i and even GoPros and everything pretty much in between. Now, a lot of the time, I'm actually going for more of a unique or individual look rather than something based on a specific profile. So I will usually just leave my source camera as default and then I'll actually sort of tweak and play with my image to suit the, the look and feel that I'm personally going for. And I can do all the similar sort of things that I could do in the Lumetri color panel, like change my expose, my temperature. And if we dive down into our levels and color correction, here we can change the shadows and the mid-tones so we can affect the contrast of the image. We can affect the, the color shift, the hue of the image with the wheels here. What Film Convert doesn't have is any of the secondary color corrections. So for that type of thing, I'll definitely be using the Lumetri color panel. But one of the great things it does have is the ability to add grain to your image. Now grain is an aesthetic choice. Now I'll often use the grain emulation to hide small imperfections in the video, usually caused by digital noise or a bit of macro blocking. So especially if I'm shooting on a more budget orientated camera, I might get some artifacting, even some moiré or aliasing as well. And grain can be really handy to not mask it, but just take away from the effect and give the image a softer, more sort of organic feel to it. And this is all you know, very subjective, all very much to taste, so it's personal preference. But having the ability to add grain, something that Film Convert does very well, something that doesn't exist in the Lumetri color panel, is great. And it even allows you to change the size of your grain. So if you wanted to go for a really sort of old vintage look, you could select eight millimeter grain, and that's really gonna degrade your image. But if you're going for a particularly stylized look, that can be great. And it has all the way up to 35 mil full frame grain, which is obviously a lot finer grain and everything pretty much in between, Super 35, uh, Super 16, 16 mil. You also have the ability to change the amount of grain. So you can really bump it up if you wanted to go for a really grainy image, or if you wanted to just add a very subtle bit, and this is often what I do, I'll dial it down to somewhere between 20 and 50%, give it more of an organic feel, and hide any imperfections from macro blocking, aliasing, or moire that I might have in my image. The other great thing with Film Convert is that it's an accelerated effect like the Lumetri color panel. So it's able to take advantage of the GPU and you're able to see virtually real time, slight, maybe slightly slowed down playback, but get a really good idea of how the effect is affecting your image. And so I can go in when it's playing back and I can play with my sliders and see that effect once again in real time. So what I thought I'd do just to finish up is do a little bit of work on this image here, do my initial corrections using the Lumetri color panel and then adding on film cover as well and then just tweaking my image just to taste. So if we start off, I'm just gonna warm this image up a little bit and then I'm gonna bring down my whites a little bit because it's just starting to clip a little bit in this part of the image. Bring my highlights down as well, and that's starting to bring some of the detail back in the water here. I need to be fairly light with this because this was shot on a DJI Phantom and it's not gonna hold up to really aggressive grading. I'm just gonna add, there we go. Okay, so that's my basic correction. And if I just toggle the before and afterwards, we've just added a little bit of color here to the sunset, uh, brought back some of the detail in the blown out area here. Uh, and it's looking quite a nice shot. I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it's not too bad. What I have over here on the right-hand side is a real dark area. 
there's some color information in there. The trees are obviously green. And what I want to do is just boost that up a little bit and add a little bit of saturation in that. This is going to be a perfect candidate for secondary color correction. So if we jump into the secondary color correction, and what I've done here is I've just gone ahead and used the eyedropper tool, selected the green trees, and if I just apply the mask, we can see there, that's a really good mask there that we've got the trees here, and we've also got these trees over here in the background. What I've done is I've just taken a quick time to just refine the mask. You can denoise it, um, just take out a little bit of the noise and just blur it a little bit so it's just got a bit of a soft edge. So if I untick that, I can then go down to my color wheels and what I can do is I can just shift probably the shadows because it's mainly a quite dark part of the image. If I just start to bring those over, that's probably a little too much actually itself. Just very slightly over to the green side and then what I could also do, I could change my tint there you can see how it's affecting the rocks as well and that's obviously way too harsh so we'll just dial that down a little bit and then probably just increase our saturation so if i just toggle that off and on again that's a fairly subtle but actually reasonably impactful adjustment and what i mean by that it's not instantly noticeable to the untrained eye but if we toggle it on and off we're just bringing back some color information there so it's a really good example of how secondary color correction can be used within the Lumetri color panel. And if we look at our before and after, we can see all the work that we've done on that image within the Lumetri color panel. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add my Film Convert plugin now to the clip. And I've got it on here and I'll just enable it. And I've added already added on a film stock. So this is one of the Fuji Film film stocks. And actually it's a little bit probably overexposed there. And one of the controls you'll see here that I have is the curve. And this is sort of almost the, the highlight roll off curve or the contrast curve that's added to the film stock. And if I just bring that down a little bit, that's just gonna drop the shadows and the highlights down a little bit. And that's actually looking a little bit more pleasing to my eye. I'll want to put some grain on so I'm going to leave it with 35 mil full frame and you won't be able to see this on YouTube because of the compression but I do have a nice fine organic grain on there which is just making the image look nice and pleasing to the eye and I'll probably dial that down from 100 to somewhere around about 60% something like that and that's pretty much all that I'll do so it's a two-stage process there and if we just take the two effects off this was the original clip the Firstly, the global corrections and then the secondary color correction with the Lumetri panel and then just a final tweak with Film Convert just to get that grade and that look that I want. So if I go ahead and play back through the clip, I've got reasonably smooth performance. I've got a few drop frames, but we've got two effects on a 4K clip. So that's probably to be expected. But I can go ahead and just tweak those and turn them off so we can see the original clip. Firstly, with the Lumetri effect and then just a final film convert top layer to give it that organic film-like emulation. Well hopefully that gives you an insight in how both tools can work together and you can really get the most out of your footage. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback please drop them in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.